Perfect. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our second nutrition session with Rihanna. Um, so for today, if you don't want your picture um, in the video, please turn your camera off. These will be recorded, just so you know. Um, and I will let uh, Rihanna take it away with uh, what we're going to be doing today. Hi, guys. It's super nice to see everyone again. I'm glad everyone could make it to our second session and I didn't scare you away at our last session. Um, but basically, we're going to get right into just like a little chat and we're going to play a game for most of this session. So that'll be fun. So I'm just going to get into it and I'm going to share my screen with you so you can see what I am talking about. All right. So. I'll just hop into this presentation. Okay, so um, welcome to our second session. Um, so if anyone had any thoughts on our last session or tried to drink more water, you can let us know in the chat because um, I hope that everyone was a bit more mindful about their water intake um, and their fluids intake since the last time that we chatted. Um, but now we're going to carry on with our second topic. So our second topic for today is aiming for balance. All right, so tonight we're quickly going to go over the balanced plate uh, method of eating and balanced eating in general before we get into a fun sort of Jeopardy style game. Um, and so the Jeopardy style game is going to test sort of, you know, just, just what you know. Um, and most of the answers, though, I will be casually mentioning um, while we do this first part of the presentation. So um, we'll kind of see if you guys are paying attention or not. <laughs> um, all right, so. Let's go back one screen. Okay, let's get into it. So first of all, we're just gonna chat about the balance plate first. This is an approach to eating that is flexible, customizable, and should get you all the nutrients that you need. There are three main components that make up a balanced plate plus one special extra. And we want all of the components on this plate when possible because they all work together really well. There are, these are basically the things that you want to try to get on your plate at each meal. Um, so no matter, you know, where you're at with your eating pattern, whether you're already maybe doing the balanced plate way of eating and you didn't even know it, or, or if you're not, um, if this is a goal of yours after the session, I'm just going to encourage you to use an add in method to start to build a balanced eating pattern. So this means that you'll focus on adding in, you know, sort of fun foods or nutritious foods versus, you know, eliminating or taking away like quote unquote um, bad foods, even though I don't really like to use the words good or bad to describe foods as, you know, all foods kind of serve their own purpose. So then what is balanced eating? So balanced so that balanced plate is more about sort of like the what that we eat, but um, you know that balanced eating is about the why and the how of eating. So considering why we eat and how we eat is going to paint a much more clear picture of whether your eating pattern, and when oh. I say eating pattern, I just mean what you eat, is truly supporting your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health. So health is multifactored. And so when we choose what we eat, we can look at why we choose the foods we do and see if that supports your overall health. And balanced eating also considers how you eat. So for example, like, do you take your time? Do you enjoy your meals with others that are in your bubble, of course? <laughs> and do you cook or have access to home cooked meals? Do you find enjoyment in eating? Do you eat when you're hungry and honor your comfortable fullness. So all of these are important to consider because a healthy or balanced eating pattern is more than just about what you eat. All right, so let's get back to the balanced plate. Like I mentioned, there are three main components plus one little extra that make up a balanced plate. So these are fruits and vegetables, carbohydrates or carbs as I'll be referring to them, proteins and fats. And we're gonna just quickly chat about each one individually. All right, so first of all, we're gonna chat about fruits and vegetables. So like many of us know, um, these guys are important to include in your diet. 
as they give you a bunch of vitamins and minerals such as you know vitamin C, antioxidants, vitamin A, potassium, and folate, and of course fiber to help keep you regular and fill you up. With a balanced plate approach, we use a plate to give us an approximate portion size just as a reference. Like this, this should be customized to what you need and it's totally allowed to change on a daily basis. So, you know, use these suggestions as a reference, but like make it work for you in our future sessions. So like um, in a couple weeks and in a month or so, we're gonna talk about more, more about how to do this. And so then for fruits and vegetables, as just like a good place to start is to try to fill your fill about half of your plate with them. And this can include any non-starchy vegetable and or any fruits. And you can use fresh or canned or frozen. Um, honestly, whatever you have available or whatever you prefer. And some examples um, might be like broccoli, bell peppers, lettuce, peas, um, berries, apples, oranges, and tomatoes just to name a few. There's obviously so many to choose from. All right. Our next component is carbs. Honestly, I love carbs. Carbs give you usable energy that your brain actually prefers to use, as well as fiber, vitamins and minerals. Like some forms of carbs are even fortified with important vitamins and minerals. Um, and pastas and cereals are examples of carbs that do that. And including carbs at your meal will also help keep you full longer. And with this balanced plate approach, you'll want to aim for about a quarter of your plate to be carbs. But we'll talk about this in the next few sessions. Um, but you will need to increase this depending on your activity. So again, customizable, <laughs> and you can adjust it on a daily basis. But for just a general reference, a quarter plate is totally appropriate. And carbs, as some of you may know, are the starchy part of your meal. So this can include regular starches, you know, like pastas, bread, cereals, and starchy vegetables, such as potatoes and corn. And this also includes whole grains, such as quinoa, rice, barley, and oats. And if you're able to include whole grains at some of your meals, that's awesome. All right, and moving on to proteins. So protein foods help with muscle repair and rebuilding as I feel like that's mostly what they're promoted as, but they are also sort of our main food source of iron and B vitamins. And again, they help keep you full longer. They help with your satiety at your meals. And so you can start again as a reference point, start with about a quarter plate of proteins. And again, with activity and sport, you're likely gonna have to adjust this um, depending on the day. So proteins can be animal or plant-based. Animal proteins are like your meat. So like beef, poultry, fish, um, eggs, and your dairy products like milk, yogurt, and cheeses. And your plant-based proteins would include things like your soy products, so like soy milk, um, edamame, tofu, as well as nuts and nut butters and beans and lentils, such as like chickpeas and black beans, stuff like that. So both animal and plant sources are great to include. Um, some plant sources will also have more fiber, but possibly, you know, less available iron. So if you're wanting to include more plant-based sources of protein, it would likely be a good idea to talk to a dietitian. Um, but vegetarians and vegans can definitely get adequate protein from their diet. All right, and lastly, let's chat about fats. So this little guy is our extra component. You know, fat is important to include as it makes meals more filling and it helps with healthy hormone production and helps absorb fat soluble nutrients. Um, and fats don't need to be a main component of the plate like the other ones that we just chatted about, but we do wanna include about two to three tablespoons of extra added fats per day, which is like about one tablespoon per meal. And the type of fat is key. So there are fats naturally found in food and we aren't talking about those ones. We're talking just about like the fats that we would add to our meal or you know the fats that we cook with. And these are either gonna be our unsaturated or our saturated fats. 
we want to try to choose unsaturated fats more often as these are sort of like our heart healthy fats and include um, sources like canola oil or olive oil, um, non-hydrogenated or soft margarine, avocados, nuts and seeds, and fats from fish such as like salmon. And saturated fats can be used, but if when possible, um, should be limited such as like butter would be an example of an added fat. And trans fats that are added to food, so the manufactured trans fats, um, are already incredibly limited in Canadian manufacturing, but should we should still be aware of them and try not to include them if at all possible. Um, and these added trans fats are often found in things um, like processed foods and um, like processed baking products. But there are a few things that we should keep in mind when looking at balanced eating or healthy eating or um, that balanced plate approach. And the first thing is that variety is key. So this goes for fruits and vegetables, carbs, protein, and, and fats. The more colors, the more types, and the more forms of these foods that we can have, the better. So we don't need to get too hung up on trying to include one like super food, cause, mostly because that's not really a thing, but it's also just better to focus on getting a wide variety rather than just focusing on one specific food. And the, another thing to remember is to adjust to what you need. So everyone is different. And so some people will need maybe a bit more carbs than others. And some people might need more protein than others. Um, so find what works for you and what is accessible to you and adjust it day to day. Especially as an athlete, you will need to adjust for maybe like those pre or post workouts, which again, we'll chat about um, in later sessions. And lastly, you're going to want to allow for flexibility. There is no such thing as perfect eating. So, you know, don't forget to enjoy what you're eating and don't worry about having to like eat perfect or follow this perfectly all the time. All right. So let's, I'm, I just want to show you a couple examples of what like a balanced plate might look like. Um, I feel like that's always helpful for me. So let's just like quickly break it down. So in this first picture, I think everyone can maybe hopefully see this blue dot. In this first picture closest to the words, you can see that we've probably got like chicken and we've got some carrots, maybe some spinach on the side and some rice. So this would be an example of a balanced plate. So we've got all of the components, easy peasy, just thrown together. Um, and same with this top picture here, we've got like a half a plate of our vegetables and vegetables and or fruit, which we can totally do with our carbs like that pasta and our protein with the fish. Um, so that would be another great example of a balanced plate. And then I also just wanted to show you like another fun example of what a balanced meal could look like, even if it's not exactly like quartered or halved off or have separate portions, but you can totally have a mixed meal or like a sandwich type meal and still have it be balanced. I feel like I'm not totally sure where the protein is in that. I thought it was hummus at the bottom, but I don't know if it is because hummus would count, but <laughs> we'll pretend that it's hummus for now. Or maybe they've got some cheese in there or something, but we've got our vegetables, our carbs, and hopefully a protein in there somewhere. But that's what a balance plate might look like. Okay. So um, that's it for the little presentation. I really only just wanted to chat for just like a little bit before we get into our game so that we have lots of time to do our game. And we'll have time for questions after the game. How about that? So then we can hop right into our um, Jeopardy game. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly stop sharing for just one second and check out the chat really quick. All right, so I'm gonna share our game um, and yeah, so the way that this is going to work is we're going to ask you guys to write down your answers just by yourselves at home to just like write down your answers for each question. And if you get it right, you can write down the point amount beside that question. And then at the very end, you can tally it up. I mean, we don't have any prizes or anything, sorry, but <laughs> so this is just for fun. So <laughs> but what we want to do is just have, let everyone have a chance to like answer their own questions and then we'll see how many points you got at the end. Um, and then you have bragging rights, I guess. 
Um, so yeah, so then we'll just do it that way. And after each question, so with each question, you're gonna have about like five to 10 seconds to answer it and write it down. And then I'll show you the answer. And then I'll just chat about it, about it really quick. And then, yeah, we'll see what happens at the end of it. And then if you have any questions, um, feel free to write those down as well. Okay. So Chloe, just one thing before you get going. So you. try not to uh, unmute yourself. So I'm actually going to turn the chat off so that we can't put the answers in the chat. You guys got to go solo tonight. Okay. Um, okay. So is everybody ready? Everyone has a piece of paper or a phone or something in front of them to write their answers down. If you want to just do it in your head, that's okay too. Perfect. Gooey. Yeah, what's your question, Brenda? What? I have I paper and pen. Perfect. That's all you need then. Okay, so make sure you guys stay are staying muted and I will let Rihanna take it away from here. All right, guys, I'm just gonna whoops, quickly pull it up on my screen. Here, hear Rihanna. I don't know is why. That, is anyone else having troubles hearing me? Can you hear everyone else, Courtney? Um, uh, I think so you can see the question, so you can just read the questions and then answer. Uh, okay. 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 All right. So Brenda, make sure you stay muted, please. All right, I'm going to pull the game up and we're going to get started. All right. Um, I'm just going to do it in whatever order I want to do it in. How about so? Let's start with proteins for 200. Okay, so this food is creamy and sometimes contains probiotics. So you can write down your answers real quick. We'll just give you a few seconds and then I'll show you the, the answer right after this. All right, ready? Maybe. It is yogurt. Okay, so if you got that right, you can write down 200 points beside that answer. All right, and I mean, if anyone has questions after, you can um, write down your questions maybe on your piece of paper too, if we um, have the chat off right now. But yeah, yogurt, specific kinds of yogurt can be great sources of probiotics. Um, not all yogurt has probiotics though, so you have to make sure that you check the label if you want a yogurt that has probiotics. All right, so we covered that one. So let's maybe try carbs for 300. This whole grain is high in fiber and is naturally gluten-free. Okay, so I'll give you guys a few seconds. Take your best guess on these ones. I say yes. I'm gonna say what is bread. You guys, can you keep yourselves muted? We're, we want everyone to have a chance to answer on their own, please. Yeah, you gotta stay muted, Courtney. All right. And it is actually quinoa. So it's a tiny little round seed um, that kind of is a little bit like rice, I guess, but it's a whole grain. And if you have someone who, if you know someone who's gluten-free, um, it's a great option for them. All right. So if you got that one right, or if you're, or if you're really close, like I so you can give yourself 300. Um, that one's kind of hard to spell. Okay, let's try fruits and vegetables for 100. This fruit is commonly mistaken for a red vegetable. I may or may not have seen this in the chat already, but I'll just give you guys a couple more seconds to answer this. Vegetable already. All right, so it's a tomato. So a tomato is actually a fruit, but because it is kind of savory. It's often sort of mixed in with vegetables, but it's actually a fruit. All right, let's try fats. Let's go for, let's go for 500 on fats. All right, this fish is a very good source of omega-3 fats. I'll give you guys a couple seconds. 
And I did mention this in our little chat. All right, so it is salmon. So salmon is a really good source of heart healthy fats. So as long as you're not allergic to, to fish or seafood or anything, um, that's, a, that's a fun one to include, canned, frozen, fresh, whatever. All right, so if you got that right, you can put 500 down beside that answer. All right, let's maybe do another fats for 100. So this fat is commonly paired with jelly on a sandwich. So this fat, what goes with jelly on a sandwich? Um, so you can write your answer down. And the answer is peanut butter. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of that combination, but lots of people are. So, you know, everyone likes their own things. If you got that right, you can give yourself 100 points. All right, let's go to fruits and vegetables for 300. This leafy vegetable is Popeye's favorite food. All right, can try this out. It's a dark green colored vegetable. All right, it is spinach. Okay, so I feel like this is like a classic cartoon and he always liked spinach a lot, which, cause it had iron in it, I think it was, but it has a little bit of that, but not very much cause it's a vegetable. But if you got that right, you can get 300 points. And let's go to carbs for 100. This carb is usually sliced and is perfect for sandwiches. Speaking of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, now what is the sandwich made with? <laughs> okay. And that is bread one of the most popular carbs, I would say, and one of my favorites as well. Um, so if you got that one right, you can give yourself 100 points. Um, let's go proteins for 500. These legumes or beans are the main ingredient in hummus and are very high in fiber. So I did mention this guy in our little presentation. But if you can just take a guess at any bean, really, that would be a great start. But if you know what hummus is, also, that's a really yummy thing to have. And that is chickpeas. So those are little round, um, sort of beige colored beans. And you can find them canned or um, dried, and they're really good if you roast them as well. All right, let's maybe try fats for 300. So that one was 500, so let's go to a 300. This bright yellow plant grown right here in Manitoba makes a heart healthy oil. Okay, so I'll give you guys a few seconds. So we're looking for this type of oil. <laughs> Someone found the music, I love it. <laughs> it was me, it was me. Nice. <laughs> so this, we are looking for what is canola. If you said canola oil, that was totally correct as well. And my dad is a farmer and he actually grows canola. So it's a really, really beautiful plant. And if you see a big field of it, which if you live in Manitoba, you probably have, um, that's where canola oil comes from. So if you got that right, that was for 300. Oh, let's, we haven't done a 400. Let's do proteins for 400. This soy based product usually comes in blocks and is great in stir fry. Okay. So, <laughs> there we go. And if anyone catches my spelling mistake, you get extra points for that. <laughs> Okay, so that is tofu. So honestly, I feel like this is something that I would like to use more, but it's great in stir fries. And you know, if you use a sauce or mixed foods because it does take on the flavor of what it's cooked with. Um, and it's a plant-based source of protein. So that's always fun too. All right, so if you got that right, um, you get 400 points. 
Oh, let's hop over to fruits and vegetables. Okay, fruits and vegetables for 200. This fruit is a popular juice choice and usually contains pulp. Okay, take a guess at which fruit juice this is. All right, it is orange juice. Um, so clearly I couldn't give you the color of the juice as a clue, but um, orange juice sometimes contains pulp. I personally don't like it with pulp though, but if you do, that is awesome. Okay, so if you got that right, that was 200 points. Let's hop over to, let's stay in this category and let's do fruits and vegetables for 500. Okay, so this berry, is very high in fiber and belongs to the rose family. So take a guess at which berry might belong to the rose family and is high in fiber. Okay. So the answer is raspberry. However, I also feel like strawberries could be an answer. So if you guess strawberry, I will also give it to you. But raspberries are higher in fiber than strawberries are. So that's why I put raspberry on this one. But if you guessed either one of those, you could give yourself 500 points. Okay, we're gonna go over to, oops, not that one. We already did that one. Let's go over to proteins for 100. Okay, so these nuts can also be made into a milk. Take a guess at which nut this might be. It's kind of popular. Um, all right, so we've got almonds. So almonds are a good source of protein, but actually almond milk is not a great source of protein. It really doesn't have very much protein in it. So if you're gonna choose uh, a milk that's a sort of a plant-based one. Uh, soy milk would be your best bet, actually. Okay, so we've been neglecting the carbs category. So let's go over to carbs for 400. Okay, so this whole grain has soluble fiber and helps lower your cholesterol. So take a guess at which whole grain this is that you might eat for breakfast. All right, it is oats. So oats, or if you guessed oatmeal, you could totally get a point for that too. Um, so those are one of my favorite whole grains, super diverse, um, super yummy. So let's go on to, let's close out proteins. Let's go to proteins for 300. So this protein is a breakfast staple and is a good source of iron. So think protein. All right, we've got eggs. So as long as you eat the yolk of the egg, you're getting a good source of iron as well. There isn't any iron though, just in the white. So those egg yolks can be important. All right. We are getting down to the last few. So if you got that one right, you can give yourself 300 points. Um, let's go to fats for 400. Okay, so this fruit is actually a great source of heart healthy fats. And take your best guess at this one. It's green and it makes a yummy dip for chips. All right, so the answer is and avocado. So avocados are an awesome source of fats um, as well as actually fiber. Avocados have a lot of fiber in them too. So they're super fun. So if you like guacamole, um, you're getting some good nutrients in there too. All right, let's do our last 500 one. How about carbs for 500? This starchy vegetable comes in many varieties, including russet, and sweet. You can take your best guess. So this one is grown in gardens, I would also say quite often and super common. Okay. 
Okay, so we've got potatoes, one of our most diverse foods, I would say, ever. Potatoes can do a lot of things, and they make a lot of good foods, so good on them. All right, let's close out the carbs category. So if you've got potatoes, you get 500 points. Now we're on to carbs for 200. Okay, so this carb has over 50 names and includes ones such as linguine and cavatappi. You can take your guess, best guess at this type of carb. Mm -hmm. <gasps> so it is pasta. So pasta has a ton of names and honestly, I don't know them off the top of my head because I just Googled how many names it has, but I was like mind blown. So there's tons of names, but tons of types. Um, and those are just a couple of them. All right, let's do fats for 200. Your second last one. Okay, this one might be kind of hard, but this brown seed is a source of heart healthy fats and fiber. It's also um, grown here in Manitoba and its flowers are actually a really beautiful sort of light blue purpley color. So this one is flaxseed. So flaxseeds are great um, sort of either whole or ground. Both are both are really awesome. To get the to get the fats out of them, they do need, do need to be ground flax seeds though, which you can grind yourself if you have like a coffee grinder, uh, or you can just buy them like that too. All right, and our very last question for the day, guys. This is for all the four hundred points. Okay, this veggie comes in many colors such as green, red, orange, and yellow, and is a really high source of vitamin C. So take your best guess at what this vegetable could be. Go. All right. So it is peppers. If you said bell peppers, that would also be super correct. So these guys are um, a really great source of vitamin C. So I feel like oranges get a lot of press for being high in vitamin C, but peppers are awesome for that as well. So they're super versatile as well. Depending on which color you like, you can have them on many things. I personally, I really like orange and yellow peppers. I don't know about you guys, but those are some of my favorites. Okay, so that closes out our Jeopardy game. I'm gonna stop sharing the screen. And I'll just give you guys a second. Um, if you care about your total, you can add it up quickly. Or if you had any questions, um, we'll have time for questions. But that basically wraps up my chat on our just intro to balanced eating and what the different sort of components we might want to include would be. And that opens up our kind of conversation for some future chats as well, because we're going to be chatting more about proteins and carbs for sure. Um, so this is all just good sort of background information as well. And I finally made a Jeopardy game. So I'd also say that to win. So. <laughs> How many of you um, already eat a pretty balanced plate at least once a day? Some hands? No one, a couple of you. I've seen some hands. Good mm -hmm. stuff. Awesome. Perfect. So I'll do about nine, eight, nine minutes of questions if people have questions. And uh, if you want to tell us your Jeopardy score, you can do that as well. Oh, Hello, okay. Brenda. <laughs> well. did, did anyone get all of the questions right? Alec, you got all of them right and Kit. Wow. Hey. That's awesome. I think I got like some right. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I, I didn't uh, even uh, get them all right. How many points did uh, they got here? Uh, uh, they have proteins, codos, fruits, and vegetables. We did it together. Hello, Alec. Awesome. <laughs> Great job, everybody. Does mm -hmm. anyone, Garrick, you have a question for Rihanna? Okay. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, yes, I, yes, I do. What's your question? About uh, carbs and uh, fats. 
Mm-hmm. Now, I'll be eating about 12 burgers every time, and I hide lots of bread in my room. Okay. You have lots of bread in your room? Yeah, I hide them. Oh, you hide them. Okay. Ah. You shouldn't have to hide your bread there, Garrick. I know, because there's a lot of things that, that, you know, I don't want to get into personal stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, maybe try and just limit your bread intake a little bit. If you're, don't don't yeah. eat a whole loaf of bread a day. That's a bit too much, I think. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we want some variety. Yeah, and including like 12 burgers. Okay. 12 burgers, crazy. One yeah. can pay for? So I'm there not. there might be some room for, for some variety and maybe uh, mixing in some different foods even. Um, yeah. I feel like that could be something we could work on. Yeah, so like for me, I am writing a book. You're writing a book. Oh, cool. Nice. Yeah, because so the things that well, I put inside my mouth. And uh, I want to find myself a lot, uh, be a, a better person. Awesome. Good job there, Garrett. Okay, we got David has a question here. Uh, I, 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 I,
hungry for it. Yeah, so you feel hungry afterwards or just like going into your meal? Yeah, going to my meal. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. fair. I mean, that I guess that's a good time to eat then. If you're hungry before the meal, you pr should probably eat then. <laughs> Why well, I, I had a, for lunch, I had a hamburger and cucumbers. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, see then if you look at that, we've got our protein in the hamburger patty and we've got carbs in the bun. And if you had cucumbers, then you have your vegetables. So that's a nice balanced meal too. Mm hmm Brenda, okay. do you have a question? Who, me? Yeah, you had your hand up. <laughs> okay, hamburger and peas. Okay. <laughs> Marty, okay, we'll do two more questions and that's all we have time for tonight. Marty. Um, I don't know, my dad always told me that, that uh, what was it, canola oil actually wasn't healthy. Where did you, where did you read that it was healthy or whatever? Yeah, so canola oil actually has a really nice um, fat profile. Um, so it has sort of the most, well, when we look at it, it has sort of the most like omega-3, so our sort of anti-inflammatory fats in it compared to olive oil is pretty good. So olive oil is pretty up there as well with like being one of our favorites, um, <sighs> but compared to something like a, like a coconut oil has quite a high amount of saturated fats versus the olive oil or the canola oil, which have more of those unsaturated fats, so the omega-6 and the omega-3s, which are lovely. Perfect, I think Garrick had a question. I see maybe April. No, me, Joan. Joan? Yes, thank you. I yeah. can just see April's name. <laughs> um, I had, for supper today, I had pork and tomatoes and crackers. Okay. I mean, hey, you've got all the components there. We've got crackers, which are your carb, tomatoes, which are your vegetable, and pork, which is your protein. So that is balanced. Yeah, that works for you totally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Lindsay, last last question of the night. Okay, um, for my supper, I had brown rice and a Caesar salad and. Um, well, I and then I had, and then I had chicken. Mm -hmm. chicken. Okay. So you've got all the components there again. So like salad <laughs> definitely count as your vegetable um, and can sometimes make it easier to like make that half a plate because they have a bit more volume to them. And then if you had the rice and some chicken, that's great. Awesome examples, guys. I'm going to yes, start coming to Lindsay's house for supper. Right, I don't know. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, last question of the night. Is it good to drink a cup of water before your meal? Yes. Um, I would say it depends if you're thirsty, to be honest. Like if you're thirsty, go for it. Um, I feel like sometimes people say that um, to sort of decrease their hunger but if you're actually like physically hungry that means you need food and water's not going to take care of that. So if you struggle though with getting your water in, it might be a good idea to purposely add it in before or during your meal even, or after your meal. Um, but I mean, it can be helpful depending on why you're doing it. So that, again, that intention, so that why behind our food choices, um, even our timing of our food choices or our beverage choices um, is really important. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so we are going to wrap up our nutrition session tonight. So everyone give a big zoom. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rihanna. Thank you. We it's will nice see you guys again. again. Thank you very yeah. much. Rihanna, yeah. have yeah. a great experience. Yeah. Where you have a nutrition lesson. Yeah. I'm happy to be here and I'm excited to, to do a few more with you guys too. Yeah, I miss you. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye. 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 Bye.
Perfect. So I got everybody off. <laughs> so I think that went really well. I couldn't see anybody. Um, sorry, I was going to stop it.